to the freshman presentation for 2022 to Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology, or is like what we like to call it, it's TJ. What we would like to talk about is a little bit of what's going on at TJ, uh, the school, the application process, along with various steps in terms of completing the application, which includes the writing components, our selection process, and then some commonly asked questions uh, that we seem to get frequently that we want to be able to go over with you to help you understand some of the, this information. Uh, with me today is Linda Sperling, and I'm Jeremy Sugar. I'm the admissions director. Uh, Linda, can you, uh, you know, kind of take us through a little bit more information about TJ and, and share a little bit with the audience uh, of the mission? Absolutely. The TJ mission statement really has three primary components. Um, it is to provide students a challenging learning environment, to inspire joy at the prospect of discovery, and to foster a culture of innovation. And if you've ever had an opportunity to be around any of the students at TJ, they absolutely embody this mission statement. As you can see by the map here, the location of TJ is just off of 495 and Braddock Road in Fairfax County. What makes TJ different? TJ is a regional governor school for science and technology. And what that means is the school boards of education for all five jurisdictions vote to allow their students to apply. Currently, those jurisdictions are, of course, Fairfax, Arlington, the City of Falls Church, Loudoun County, and Prince William County. Students apply to attend rather than at your base high school where you walk in and you register your student. Um, because it's a governor's school, we have the application process. Um, all courses are taught at an honors AP or post AP level. And research-based learning begins in ninth grade, focusing on connecting ideas and creating flexible class time. What this means is uh, for ninth graders coming in, they have a block of classes together called IBEST. It is integrated biology, English, statistics, and technology. Those blocks together allow for the flexibility to extend a particular course, perhaps a biology lab that the teacher needs more time on. Um, it could be that they want to take a field trip. They can do that, and it's not going to impinge upon other classes that are not a part of the iBEST uh, coursework. Um, you'll see on the right-hand side, these are some of the robots that the students actually build in their technology class. The research-based learning continues through 10th and 11th grade, connectivity with two courses each year. And ultimately, where we're going with this is at the end of the junior year, the students will pick a topic that they want to do as their senior research lab. Um, on site, you will see a list of all of the, the uh, laboratories that are at the school. If they've picked a topic that perhaps isn't covered under one of the on-site labs, then they will have an opportunity to participate perhaps in the mentorship program, where someone from the, the assigned mentorship uh, companies will perhaps come to the school, or perhaps the students will have an opportunity to visit them. Thank you, Linda. The one of the things that we would like to share with uh, the audience today uh, is that more than just uh, the research labs and the research information that is provided from ninth grade uh, through twelfth grade is that the school's more than just research. Uh, there is a lot of a variety of other curricular options that are available to our students. So you will get a full academic uh, curriculum for those students and for your opportunities in terms of what you're interested in. Uh, the fine and performing arts, uh, world languages, histories, Englishes, just like any other comprehensive high school. Because we are a public high school, those opportunities and those experiences are available to you as well. Uh, and one of the other unique things that TJ offers that most other schools don't offer is what is known as eighth period. Now the eighth period is a unique uh, course and it's a unique design in the school. It meets twice a week at the end of the day on Wednesday and Friday. And what this really is, is it's an embedded activities period into the school day. And the reason for that is, is if you reflect back on the, uh, the, the slide and the information that Linda had shared previously in terms of the location, and you think about where everyone's coming from, 
it is sometimes difficult for some students to be able to stay after school uh, due to transportation. And so to be able to hold all of the different activities and the events and opportunities that students participate in schools, we embed that into our school day. We put that into what is known as the eighth period. And this is a wide variety of clubs and events and activities. And this also allows those students to continue to participate in extracurriculars. Now, like many of the other high schools, and in fact, all the other high schools in Fairfax County, uh, we offer a full range of extracurricular activities for the students in terms of sports, uh, in terms of uh, different fine and performing arts performances. So if you want to perform on the stage uh, and want to be a part of a play or a musical, those options are there. If you, want, if you play in the band, uh, and you want to be a part of the, match, uh, the marching band or some of the other band options that are provided. Likewise, if you're a tennis player or a golf player or you play basketball, you swim or dive, those things are all available to our students as well. And oftentimes, many of our students actually do take that opportunity to move forward. One of the things that we want to make sure is that we want to look into what is it that you're really interested in. And we want to provide those options and opportunities for all of those students and provide you with a wide variety of opportunities to really enjoy and experience the high school opportunity. So when we think about what is it that we're looking for in terms of an academic student and for students that are choosing to consider TJ as a high school option, is what we're really looking for is evidence of academic achievement and then genuine and sincere interest in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. And this is something that we've been talking about uh, for a long time in the education. And certainly TJ uh, is at, certainly at the forefront of providing those opportunities for those students. And so there are ways in which we require and ask you to go through through this application process with us so that we can go through a selection process and ultimately select those students. Uh, one of the things that I think is really helpful for you, whether this is the student or as a parent, is to consider these questions. Consider why you want to go to TJ. Consider what it is about STEM that is enticing to you. You don't have to want to be a part of everything, but certainly something. Right? So maybe you're a science person, or maybe you're a math person, or maybe you're really into technology, but you don't have to be involved in all of those things. It's just starting to find what it is that interests you. What have you already done to pursue that? And if you're sitting here watching this video and you're saying, you know what, I'm not sure I've really done anything, that's okay too, because it's also about thinking about your future what it is that you want to do in the future, what you can do, and potentially what TJ can offer for you. Uh, and so ultimately, these are the types of questions that we want you to really be able to answer, and we really want you to be able to think about it, because this embeds into actually the application process. And I want to have Linda share a little bit more with you about the application process itself and, and how that kind of proceeds and, and, and kind of the requirements that you're going to complete for that process. Well, let's talk about the eligibility requirements. First of all, you must be in eighth grade to apply to ninth grade. Um, you must reside in one of those participating jurisdictions. Um, you must be in honors algebra one or higher in eighth grade. So basically what we're saying is you're in algebra one honors or you could be in geometry, which would still be an, considered an accelerated class. It does not have to be designated as honors geometry. Um, along with honors um, algebra, you will need to be in honors science and then one additional honors course. Another thing to remember is for some of our participating jurisdictions, they do not offer the same type of honor selections. So what we are saying is you will need to be enrolled in the highest level class available in your school for that algebra and your science in those classes. So, and if there are any questions about that, we're gonna talk a little bit more about it um, a few slides later, but also you're always welcome to call us. And the other thing is at the end of seventh grade for your four courses, or if you've taken high school credit in a world language, you may have five courses, you need to have a, a grade point average of 3.5 GPA. If you have any problems with figuring out whether or not you will meet that minimum, 
Again, that's what we're in our office for is you're welcome to call us and we're gonna have our phone number up there and our email address because we wanna hear from you to make sure that we can allay any concerns you have about these eligibility requirements. So let's talk about the access to the application. When you go to our website, you will see this particular picture of the statue in front of TJ, and you're, you will scroll down the page until you come to the, the box, the uh, freshman application process. You're going to click on that box, and you're going to come scroll down the page, and you're going to come th to the steps for the application. You need to read through these steps before you get to the actual button to begin the application because it's going to tell you, first of all, we need the student to begin the process. And let us explain why. Because they're going to log in, whether you're an FCPS student or not an FCPS student, there's a, there's a button for each of you. And student, you're going to begin the process. You're going to enter some minimal information on page one of the uh, screen one, of the seven screens that are in the application. You're gonna fill out, answer a few questions, enter a couple of email addresses, and you're gonna hit save at the bottom of that first screen. As soon as you do that, two things are gonna happen. First of all, your parent is going to receive an email with a link to create their parent account. So parent, that's step number two. Once you receive that auto-generated email, then you're going to log in you're going to enter your information, and then you too will save that. So the second thing that happens when the applicant completes their part is the school contact or our liaison counselor at every middle school will be the one who verifies the level of math that you're taking. So now what's really important is we know that the application is going to open on a Monday evening on October 24th um, at 4 p.m. So I have no doubt that many of you will be wanting to start at that very moment. So, but we need to give our counselors 24 to 48 hours to complete this task for you because they're doing this working for us, helping us, helping you as the li liaison counselor as an ec extra task in their day. So give them time to complete the, the verification of your math and the good thing is once they've done that, again, you'll receive an auto-generated email. Um, once you've done that, then the parent and the student can log back in, finish the application. Um, you will be asked to electronically sign. Make sure you read what you're electronically signing. And then either parent or student may submit the application. Once you have submitted the application, it's really important to know that you again will receive an auto-generated email saying the application has been submitted. One thing to remember, there, there's, there are two places in the application that you will refer to often. One of them is the Applicant Progress tab, and that tells you the progress that's being made as you move through your application. The other one is the Correspondence tab. That Correspondence tab contains every email that we are sending to you, whether it's auto-generated or we're producing it and sending it to you. So those will be two places that you will wanna pay close attention to. So here is, here is the location, the button, right below those steps we've just talked about, where you will click on that button and it will open this, the first uh, screen for your application. And here it says, I am a student, I am a parent. So students, you of course will select that top radio button and you will move to the next screen. And if you are an FCPS student, you will be able to use your FCPS student ID and your password that you already have. No need to create something else. And for those of you who are not FCPS students, you will select the, um, the radio button that is located above that, check the box here. You then will be given another screen and you will then create a count that will be begin with B0, and then there will be numbers that follow it. As we talked about earlier, this application is gonna begin on Monday, October 24th at 4 p.m., and it will close four weeks later on Friday, November 18th 
at 4 p.m. Once the, sh the system shuts down at 4 o'clock, you will not be able to submit. So we really encourage you to please complete that application quickly and as soon as you can so it's off of your plate, you're not worried about it. And as a double check, go to your correspondence tab and make sure you have that email there that says, my application has been submitted. One of the things that I'd like to add to that is, and frequently we get questions about the application, the components of the application, uh, other things that are included in it. Uh, you do have a month to be able to clean it. And, and, and as, as we just shared, you know, we want you to start early. What you're really completing is a, a basic demographic information for us. To some degree, you're registering to complete these components, which is what's called the student portrait sheet and the problem solving essay. You do not need to complete any essays or any other type of writing components. You're not submitting any additional information at the time of the application other than just more or less a registration process. The reason for the timing and some of the, the delays within it uh, have to do with our work with the schools in terms of validating the math class that you're in, um, collecting information from them in terms of transcript grades, things of this nature. All of those pieces need to be uh, kind of processed through on the front end prior to getting into late, uh, it's actually in February this year, uh, on a Saturday for you to take the student portrait sheet and the problem solving essay. Now the student portrait sheet is um, listed on our website. You can actually look at those particular components on our website uh, and see what those are. And, and I'll get to those in just a moment. Um, but what happens for you is you're going to choose during that application process, you're gonna choose a test site, a location uh, in a particular middle school. Uh, so if you are in Fairfax County, you're gonna choose a Fairfax County uh, middle school that is convenient uh, to you in terms of the location. If you're in Arlington, you're gonna choose the Arlington uh, school. If you're in Loudoun, you'll choose the Loudoun schools. This happens uh, you know, across the, uh, the region and within all those schools. That applies to you even if you're a private school student. It has to do with where you live. Now part of that is choosing where do you wanna go on February 4th uh, and making sure that you're able to arrive at that school and that location to be able to, to complete this portion of the application, which is uh, a, a typed writing assessment. So you're gonna bring a laptop, uh, you'll sit down, we'll give you information in terms of how to log in, uh, and you'll have an hour of time to complete the, this particular assessment for the student portrait sheet, of which there are four questions. For the problem solving essay, that's an additional 30 minutes. So we have an hour and a half total time for you to be able to complete all of these elements, which includes four questions for the student portrait sheet and one problem solving essay. Now, like I mentioned, the student portrait sheet really looks at um, the portrait of graduate and 21st century skills. And those skills are listed here on the screen. Um, these are, are kind of ideas in terms of how you embed and ingrain this uh, as a student that's looking to apply to um, a school that focuses on STEM. Um, you know, it's a science and technology school, and so these questions are designed and developed thinking about that in, or keeping that in mind uh, so that that way students are able to embed collaboration and answer questions about how you're a collaborator or how you're a problem solver or how you're an innovator, any of those types of things. Those are the types of, of questions that we're really looking for. And then you go into um, the problem solving essay, which is a math or science based problem. It's multi steps. Uh, and we are looking for you to solve the problem. Uh, but we're also looking for you to be able to explain how you go about solving the problem. So it's more than just getting a correct answer. Uh, but beyond that, the application and the evaluation of all of this isn't just restricted to those two components or two broader components. We are looking at the GPA. Uh, and you had to meet some minimum requirements that we already talked about previously in terms of course enrollment. Uh, but the GPA, the student portrait sheet, the problem solving essay, along with some experience factors will play a role in how we over, uh, uh, create the overall determination for your application and for your offerings in terms of who's going to receive an offer to attend TJ, who might be placed in the weight pool, and 
potentially have a delayed offer and who won't be offered. Now, it is very interesting and we get a lot of questions about this, so I want to uh, take just a moment to talk about um, the holistic review process uh, and the selection process as it relates to allocated and unallocated seats. So for our, fair, uh, for our public schools, not just in Fairfax, uh, but for all of our public schools, we have an allocated seat process. And what that means is we take a look at the total number of students in eighth grade in each of our public schools. And we look at what is 1.5% of that eighth grade population. And that is the number that we allocate to each individual school. So it might be you know, two or three students, it might be as many as 10 students. Um, it really is dependent upon the size of your school. And now, not all of those students are going to apply to TJ, but those are the seats that we want to set aside and ensure students from that school have an opportunity to attend TJ. And those are the schools, or those are the students, that based upon your uh, performance in the application, we offer those students, the top performing students, those seats first. But we also have unallocated seats. And these are open to all applicants. So the first thing that we do is we fill the allocated seats up. And then we go to the unallocated, meaning this is open and available for all of our students. So it doesn't matter whether you're a private school student, a homeschool student, another public school student, there are still other seats available to all of our students. Now, what we're looking to fill is 550 seats. We will offer 550 seats to students, and then some of those students will um, choose to go to a different school. Uh, and that's quite fine. Uh, this is the reason for uh, the weight pool. And then we will go into the weight pool and we will continue to offer students in the weight pool throughout the late spring and into the summer until we have 550 students who have accepted their offer and plan on attending TJ. Uh, I think it's really important that you have somewhat of an understanding of that. But clearly, that is confusing and can be confusing. And you may still have some questions about this or how that impacts you based upon the school um, that you attend and how that kind of really pull, pull, um, plays a role in the selection process overall. Now, one of the things that uh, I think that we frequently talk about is kind of our calendar of events. And so, Linda, would you like to just kind of take us through kind of the important events as we go through? And then we'll get into some frequently asked questions that, um, that we think are important to touch base with at this point in time. This is an important piece of the, the presentation. Um, as you will see, it starts with the application opening on October 24th. November 16th, so that's two days before the application deadline, at 4 p.m. on the 16th, that is the last opportunity you will have to begin a new application. The reason for this goes back to allowing time for those school contacts to verify the math. So it's another reason, don't wait till the very end, but for those of you who may delay and you finally have decided, okay, we're gonna do this now, um, the 16th of November at 4 p.m. is the last opportunity you will have to do that. Um, then we list like, the test dates, uh, February 4th. February 10th is for those who may be sick on test day because we are planning in-person testing this year, um, or students who have accommodations, and those students will require extended time for testing. They will be testing on the 10th of February. Um, we will, we will begin the review process of putting together the information for our readers to come in. And ultimately, our regulation states that we will provide our final decisions no later than April 29th. And it is our every wish and every hope that that's exactly what we will be able to do. And you will be able then to have an answer as far as whether or not you've been given an offer to TJ. So with, with that, we're going to go forward and, and talk about some frequently asked questions that we usually have. Sure. So one of the questions that we have is residency and residency requirements. Uh, as a public school student, and as a public school, uh, which is a governor school for the state of Virginia, it is a requirement that you are a resident or you live here to be able to attend schools. That's a, that's a public school requirement. If you're attending a public school in one of the five participating jurisdictions, 
we already know that you meet the residency requirements. Uh, so there is no additional documentation that you have to submit. However, if you are a private school student, and, and we include homeschool students as private school mm -hmm. in, this in this particular case, but if you're a private school student, there is some documents that you'll need to submit to us during the application. Uh, it's just a handful of documents, um, such as your lease, deed, or mortgage statements, such as utility bills, bank statements, things of this nature. It's all a part of the application, and it won't allow you to move forward until you do submit those. Um, you know, so that's kind of one of the uh, pieces um, that you know we frequently get into. Uh, in terms of the application, must begin uh, the applicant must begin the application process. Uh, we mentioned this earlier in the steps, and it's in, it's also included on our website. There is a really important reason why the student should begin this application, not the parent, because there are two actual logins: one for the student and one for the parent. Uh, later on, when the student is going to complete the student portrait sheet and the problem solving essay, it is going to be that same login process that they are going to use to access this uh, at a later date in February. And so it's important that they start that process and complete it. By no means do we want you as the parent to not be involved in this. We certainly do. Um, and there's the reason why we create uh, a login for you as well. Uh, and you're able to see everything that the student sees inside the system. So you both have your same app, uh, access to all of the information. It's just that the student is entering that information on their account. Uh, Lynn, did you want to share a little bit about the problem solving essay and the student portrait sheet? Yes. While those are a part of the process, they are not part of the application. And families will call and they will say, so am I done with the application. I haven't completed the writing portion yet. And our response will be yes. If you have that submission email, you are completed with your application. However, the writing components will happen in early February, the 4th or the 10th. So it's a part of the process, but it's not part, neither of them are part of the actual application. Um, and then, as we mentioned earlier, the GPA and the honors courses, we understand jurisdictions are different and that there are um, approvals for each jurisdiction that you just provide the highest level of classes going back to your algebra or honors algebra, your science, and we are aware of those differences within the jurisdiction, but do not hesitate to call us if you have any questions about that, because that's why we're there, is to answer those questions. Jeremy. So, uh, so a question about the GPA that we frequently get is, uh, how do you calculate, or how do we calculate the GPA? Is it weighted? Um, do I have additional um, points because uh, I'm in an honors level class? How do you create, uh, what is an A worth? Uh, things of that nature. Um, so that that way, one, you at home could take a look at your seventh grade, end of the year grades, and start to already calculate this out on your own. Well, and, and that's such a good question. We do get a lot of phone calls, as you know. Um, the students for Fairfax County, an A, we do not use A pluses. An A is worth four points. Um, an A minus is 3.7. A B plus is 3.3. .3. A B is 3.0. So you see how that goes. So literally, if you have two A's and two B's, you could take, it's four, four, three, and three and you add that up, divide it by four, that gives you your GPA. That's very simplistic, but that's exactly what we do for, for, for those four courses. Now, in the overall process, the first quarter grades for eighth grade do become a part of this. Um, so one of the reasons we say you really need the 3.5 GPA at the end of seventh grade is because first quarter marks in eighth grade will not be strong enough to elevate a GPA that I believe is around 3.4. I think if it's below that, it will not be able to elevate it above a 3.5. Here again, any questions, please call us and we'll be happy to explain that to you a bit more. Yeah, and, and really, if you have any questions, 
Um, one of the other things that we want you to do is take a look at the screen. We have an email address here at tjadmissions at fcps.edu. You can send us emails. We're, we're very good about resp being responsive and trying to get you answers to those questions that you have. Uh, you likewise can call us at 571-423-3770. Um, one of the last things that I would like to share, and, and I'd like to thank Linda for joining me here today, uh, is that uh, this fall we will be back out in schools. Uh, we'll be providing some presentations and some information uh, along with some Q&A sessions for, uh, for those of you that are able to attend. Um, and please look for that information on our website um, that will be available uh, to tell you what schools and locations and dates and times um, that will be available. So thank you very much for taking the time to join us uh, and watching through the video. And once again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're here to help you through that application process. And we hope to see you uh, join us on this journey uh, to potentially join us at TJ.